Hey guys, what's going on? It's Amy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So um, I'm a little under the weather. I might sound a little bit funky. It might look a little bit funky, but I had to make a video about the Todd Mullis trial. Now that we've reached a verdict, uh, apparently uh, he's probably going to jail for life um, on first degree murder charges. And they gave him so many options, first degree, second degree, manslaughter, involuntary. I mean, it went down the line. I'm a little bit surprised that they actually charged him with first degree murder, but nonetheless. When the verdict was given, I believe Scott looked sad and somewhat surprised. I said there was reasonable doubt initially, and has my opinion changed since my previous video? I gotta say, not really. And I know that people do not agree with me probably so much on this, because they say, you know, it's already been um, considered a murder. The prosecution and the defense has agreed. The medical examiner has said that it was a murder, so therefore that's a closed case. My theory is um, the expert did say it was a murder, but it's an opinion. It's an expert opinion. A lot of times trials bring in, you know, the prosecution brings in experts. The defense brings in experts, and they're in the same field with completely opposing um, opinions. So I think it's all, everything's pretty much based on opinion unless you have some serious forensic proof and facts. So do I consider the murder to be a fact? No, I think there's room to consider reasonable doubt that there's a possibility at least, a possibility that it was an accident. I know that I got some, you know, crap for it. Um, I actually got a comment just today about my other video um, that said, you're not that bright, are you? So, okay, I understand if you think that doesn't make any sense or what have you. I mean, I don't love being told I'm stupid on comments, but hey, good, bad, ugly, I'd love to hear what you have to say. I mean, this is just my opinion, my thoughts on it, and everybody has a different opinion. But let me just walk you through this. Please bear with me and just listen to why I think there's a possibility, at least, that there is reasonable doubt, okay? So, could Todd have killed his wife? Sure, absolutely. Could someone else have killed his wife like the defense is saying? Possibly, she was cheating on him. It could have been the boyfriends, it could have been the spouses, but you gotta have some proof for that and they didn't really show any proof. They didn't even try. Um, could it have been an accident? Maybe. Now the main reason the experts think it wasn't an accident because there was four prongs and there was more than four puncture wounds. So let's just consider if this is a murder. Okay, let's start off with a murder, like it supposedly is. And that's based on the puncture wounds and maybe the bruising, okay? So you're, you're following someone up there, you got the rake in your hand, and you plan on attacking them from behind without them knowing about it. Now, she's found with these puncture um, wounds, with, with the rake completely inside her back. Those were the severe injuries. It was in her back. But there were other injuries that just pierced the skin. Those were the extra injuries. So now that would lead to believe that the um, smaller injuries just to the skin would have happened first. So that would mean instead of going up to her from behind and trying to hit her with all your might and getting her smashed down from the jump, like you would think you would do, this person would have gone up behind her hit her gently enough to only cause that small wounds and then give her time to fight and then stab her. I mean, that seems a little less likely to me. Why would you do that? Wouldn't you try to get her in the first one? So that seems a little strange to me. Now, if it was an accident, just, just listen, just go with me on this one. All right. Give me a minute. So it's November. It's icy. We already know the doors were icy. She could have easily slipped. We don't know where the where the break was. So say the rake's upward, she, you know, the, the doors are icy, she grabs the doors, she ends up falling. Maybe she's dizzy, maybe she's not, it doesn't matter. She falls. Who knows why she falls? She falls. She falls backwards onto the, um, the tongs, the tines. Her body feels it going to her skin and instinctively pops up to get off of it. She tries to get up, moves around a little bit, falls back down and completely impales herself. She's still alive, she can't yell because she's had her lung pierced, but she's able to move around a bit, get some bruising going, and flip over so that she's crawling. 
She's getting bruised up on her knees, on her hands. She's maybe hitting her head um, on the even on the floor or on the wall where she ends up resting until she, you know, succumbs, passes out, what have you. Now, just to me, it's just to me, just to me, just to me, just to me. There's reasonable doubt. There's reasonable doubt here. I'm sorry. I think that regardless of what you think of Todd, whether you think he's this nice, soft-spoken country boy that he's portraying and was a good father and a good husband to his wife of several, several years, or if you believe the prosecution side that he was this awful man that uh, did not treat his wife well, you still have to consider that the prosecution's reasoning for the amount of puncture wounds from this four-prong rake is not necessarily accurate and can definitely be argued. And I suggest that if you haven't actually seen the um, puncture wounds on the body, that you might want to check them out to um, kind of differentiate between what you've heard. I think the defense did a bad job and did not really defend him, and I would be appealing on the grounds of bad defense. Until then, um, I guess we'll see what happens. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a good one. Bye, guys. Thank you.